today we'll be working on our beauty found blocks. We'll be stitching block A in the video, but there's also a block B and a block C. The only difference in B and C is a little section of fabric 2 in the corners. But for today we'll go ahead and stitch A. The fabrics you'll need today, if you're doing blocks B and C, you'll need some scraps of fabric 2. You will need a square of fabric 4. You will also need a square of fabric 7. And whatever backing fabric you've decided to use. If you're going to use the optional wool, you'll need your piece of optional wool. And the threads you'll need will be thread A, thread C with a bobbin, thread B with a bobbin. You'll also need wash away thread. In this video we're going to be using the pre-cut fabrics. So you will need to have all ready to go are your pre-cuts of fabric 3. I've got mine labeled just so you can see for the video. And you'll also need your pre-cuts of fabric too. If you're not going to use the pre-cuts, go ahead and cut the required number of strips on your instructions. I've already stitched out step one on my battleizer, and I'm going to be using the optional wool batting. If you're not going to use the wool batting, you can go ahead and skip step two but I am going to use it so I'm going to place water soluble thread in the needle and go ahead and zigzag my batting on. So here's a look at step two where I've zigzagged my wool batting to the battleizer. And remember if you've decided to not work with the wool batting you can go ahead and skip step two and you can also skip step three. I'm going to go ahead and do step three because I've decided to use the bat the wool batting and step three reestablishes your uh, placement lines for your your stitching and another tip we can give you is to on your machine raise the height of your presser foot as much as you can and uh, if you get it as high as possible it'll help your presser foot clear the wool batting while it's stitching over the top of it so I'm going to be using pre-cut sections for my beauty found block and you'll notice on your instructions we have a location 3A, 2B, 3C, 2D, 3E, etc. The numbers are for the fabric, so 3 is for fabric, fabric 3, and it's all along the top, and the 2 is for fabric 2 all along the bottom. The letters are the locations, so the A, B, C, and D are the location of where the pieces go. So you have a file for all of your 3A's, 2B's, etc. for each size of the quilt blocks. So you're going to go ahead and cut out all of your 3A's, your 2B's, every single file you need for your whole quilt. And you're going to want to label them and maybe put them in a plastic bag or an envelope so you can keep your pieces separated and you don't get confused so you'll know where all of your sections will be placed when it's time to stitch. So we are ready to go ahead and stitch step four. You're going to continue using water soluble thread in the needle only. And if you're not going to use the pre-cut fabrics, you'll take a strip of fabric three and you'll place it over section 3A. And you want to make sure your strip extends at least a half an inch on the outside edge and a quarter inch at the top and the machine is going to go ahead and tack it down. And after it tacks it down, you're going to want to trim it leaving a quarter inch on the inside of the block and at least a half an inch on the outside of the block. I'm going to be using my pre-cut. So I'm going to place it over section 3A and I will remove the label first so I don't stitch it down. And what I like to do for placement is lower my needle about where I think the seam allowance should be. Again, leaving a half an inch on the outside, a quarter inch at the top, 
and I can peek underneath and make sure I have a quarter inch on the side. So that's about where it's going to go. So I'll go ahead and stitch it down. Again, this is using water-soluble thread for this step. So there's my section 3A already stitched down. And my seam allowance looks pretty good on the side with my half inch. The top looks pretty good. I'm probably going to need to trim the side just a little bit. It all depends on your placement. So now we're ready for the next step. For step five, we will go ahead and switch our thread out to a neutral thread in the needle only. Uh, we don't want to stitch our seam with a water soluble thread, so don't forget to do that. Next is fabric two. So if you're not going to use pre-cuts, you'll take your strip of fabric two and you will place it right side to your last section with your raw edges even. Let the machine stitch the seam. Then you'll flip your fabric right side out and smooth it out and stitch the tack down. Today we're going to use the pre-cuts. So just a little tip. Um, make sure you know what the right side of your fabric is. This fabric looks the same on both sides. So make sure that you are aware of which side it is so you don't get your angles wrong when you place your piece. You could mark a little dot or something on all the right sides. So I'm going to place the right side of my fabric 2 to the right side of my fabric 3. I'm going to go ahead and lower my needle to help me place it so I have a quarter inch seam allowance. And again, I'm going to need to trim a little bit of my fabric 3 off and it's time to stitch the seam. So here's, we're going to stitch my seam from step five. I lower my needle, make sure it's placed correctly, and I did go ahead and trim off some of the fabric three underneath. So now that I know I have it placed right, I'll go ahead and stitch my seam. And after my seam is stitched, I can flip my fabric two piece right side up and smooth it out. And maybe I'll go ahead and take that label off. I should have done that earlier because I did stitch it right into the seam. So for step six, it's time to tack it down. So we'll just go ahead and smooth it flat and let the machine tack it down. And we are now ready for step seven. So for step seven, we will take your strip of fabric three, if you're using the strip, and you will place it right side to the last fabric with your raw edges even and stitch the seam. Then you'll flip the fabric right side up, and for step eight, you'll tack it down. And after it's tacked down, you'll go ahead and trim it. So with the pre-cuts, um, just a little tip, you have a curve at the top for all your fabric threes and a curve at the bottom for all your fabric twos to help you distinguish them. So I'll take off my label for fabric 3C and I'll place it right side to fabric 2B. And again, lower the needle about where the intersection of the quarter inch seam will be to help me place my piece and I'll go ahead and stitch the seam. And once my seam is stitched, I will flip my piece right side up and smooth it out. And step eight is the tack down, so I'll let, I'll let the machine go ahead and tack down that section. So here's a look down at my tack down section and I can see that piece right there is just a little bit long. My next fabric is a light color so I'm going to go ahead and trim this off just a bit. And now I'm ready to go ahead and place my next fabric. So for step nine you will take either your strip of fabric two 
and place it right side to your last section with your raw edges even. You'll let the machine stitch the seam and then for step 10 you'll flip it right side up and smooth it out and let the machine tack it down and afterwards you'll go ahead and trim it. So I'm going to use my pre-cut so I'm going to remove the label and place my fabric 2D section right side to my last section with my raw edges even. Again I'll lower the needle about where my quarter inch intersection is to help me line up my placement and once I get it lined up I'll go ahead and stitch the seam. Then I can go ahead and flip my fabric section right side up and smooth out the seam. And for step 10, we tag it down. And now we're ready to move on to step 11. Step 11 we will take either your strip of fabric 3, place it right side to fabric 2 with your raw edges even. Again, you'll stitch the seam. You'll flip your strip right side up and smooth it out, tack it down, and go ahead and trim away the excess fabric. Using these pre-cuts saves you so much time. So I'll take my section 3E and I'll place it right side to my last section. Again, I'll lower the needle to determine my placement at my quarter inch intersection. I'm not too concerned about this little bit of green fabric sticking out because it is my section, my fabric three is darker than the one underneath it. So I'm not going to worry about trimming that. And I'll go ahead and stitch my seam. And after my seam is stitched, I can flip my section right side up and smooth out the seam. And step 12 will be to tack it down. So just a little information about how we determine the size of these sections. We took the exact size of each quilt section and we added a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to all three sides to give you a little bit extra room. Initially we started with a quarter inch and it was just a little bit too tight so placement was a little more difficult. So on occasion you may have to trim a little bit of your seam allowance but we think uh, trimming a little bit is a lot better than starting over because your piece was too small. So once in a while you'll have to trim a little bit, but that works. For step 13, we're back to fabric 2. So if you're going to use the strips of fabric, you'll place it right side to fabric 3 with your raw edges even. You'll stitch your seam. Then you'll flip your fabric right side up like we've been doing and tack it down and trim off the excess. So I'll take my pre-cut section 2F and place it right side to the last section, lowering my needle at my quarter inch intersection for placement. And once I get it placed where I'd like it, I'll go ahead and stitch the seam. And then for step 14, I'll flip my fabric right side up, smooth it out, and stitch the tack down. Step 15. 
Step 15 is next. I'll take my strip of fabric 3, place it right side to fabric 2, stitch the seam, and as we've been doing all along, we'll flip it right side up, tack it down, and trim off the excess. Or again, we're going to be using our pre-cuts, so I'll remove my label. Just checking the orientation, make sure my curve is at the top like it should be. And lower my needle at the quarter inch intersection to determine the placement of the piece. And again, I'm not too worried about that little bit of green sticking out because my fabric 3 is darker than the fabric 2. So we'll stitch the seam. And then for step 16, we'll flip our piece right side up, smooth out the seam, tack it down, and then we're ready for the next step. Step 17 is next. We'll take either our strip of fabric 2, place it right side to the last section with your raw edges even, You'll stitch your seam, you'll flip it up, tack it down, and trim away the excess. So I'm going to be using my pre-cut again. I will put that right side to the last section, checking my quarter inch intersection to make sure I'm placed correctly. And I can see I have quite a bit of the Fabric 3 sticking out, so I'm going to, to go ahead and take the time to trim that before stitching. So I did go ahead and trim my purple fabric underneath and now for step 17 we're going to make sure I have my quarter inch seam allowance or my quarter inch intersection placed correctly and I'll go ahead and stitch out the seam and then for step 18 we'll flip our fabric right side up and smooth out the seam and go ahead and tack it down. For step 19, the last section in the arc, we're going to take a piece of fabric 3, place it right side to fabric 2 and stitch the seam. Then you'll flip your fabric right side up, change to water soluble thread and tack it down and you'll trim leaving a half an inch on the outside edge again and a quarter inch on the inside edge. So with our pre-cut we're going to go ahead and place it looking for your quarter inch intersection and once you get it placed stitch your seam and after your seam is stitched You'll flip your section right side up and smooth it out. Don't forget to change to the water soluble thread and go ahead and stitch step 20 which is the tack down. So here's a look at our completed arc section. With our pre-cut pieces sometimes there will be a little bit of cleanup to do. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the bottom section right here as well as the top section just to even it up and that way if I have a lighter fabric going over the top of those it'll look nice and tidy underneath. Time for step 21. We will take our square of fabric 7 and place it in the upper left hand corner making sure I have at least a half an inch extending along the outside edge. We will use water soluble thread in the needle and let the machine stitch down the tack down stitch for fabric 7. Once my tack down is stitched it's time to go ahead and trim it. So on this inside edge of the block it will actually be an applique. So using my mini hoop scissors I'm going to trim very very close because the machine will come back with a satin stitch to cover up the raw edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little editing from step 21. 
I neglected to read my instructions thoroughly and I forgot to cut my piece 7 in half diagonally. Had I done that, I would have had enough to do a second block and as you can see now, I do not. So, word to the wise, read your instructions thoroughly and follow them and things will go much smoother. Now for step 22, we're going to do the same thing with our fabric 4. That one needs to be cut in half diagonally before we start. And when you place your fabric 4, leaving an out, uh, half an inch along your outside edge, you have plenty of fabric and it will be enough to do two blocks. So place your fabric 4 and go ahead and stitch your tack down. So here's my tack down from step 22. And again, I'm going to trim this side very close for applique because just like the side opposite, it'll be finished with a satin stitch, so you need to trim this nice and close. And I like to use my mini hoop scissors to get close in there. So there's a look at the block so far. Now for step 23, we'll continue with water-soluble thread and the machine will stitch a placement stitch for your next applique. Here's a look at our placement stitch from step 23. You will take for step 24 a strip of fabric 2, place it over your placement stitch, leaving a half an inch on the outside edge. You'll let the machine tack it down and then you'll go ahead and trim away the excess nice and close for applique just like we did on the arc. We will be using the pre-cuts. You can spray a little temporary spray adhesive on the back of your pre-cuts and then place it right over your placement stitch and using your water soluble thread you'll go ahead and stitch your tack down using a zigzag stitch. Just a quick look at the tack down from step number 24 and you can see how beautiful this applique fits within the area and it did leave an extra half an inch along the outside edge. So we're ready for step 26 and you will take thread A and put it in the needle only and the machine will stitch some bubble quilting on top of fabric 7. So we're ready for step 27 after doing our bubble quilting. You're going to change to water soluble thread in your needle only. Place your block back on the back of your hoop and go ahead and tack down your backing. Step 28, you will place thread C and your needle in your bobbin and the machine will stitch some satin stitches over the raw edges and do some quilting. A tip before beginning any quilting once your, uh, the back of your block is on is to go ahead and turn off your automatic thread cutter on the machine and the second thing is to bring your bobbin thread up to the top before beginning. So use your needle up and down and bring your bobbin thread up to the top and hold on to your top and bottom threads as you begin your stitching. And after the machine takes a few stitches, you can go ahead and stop and cut both of those threads and let it go. This will uh, keep you from getting bird's nests on the back of your block and just to make it much tidier looking. Step 29, place thread B in your needle and your bobbin and do a decorative stitch over the top of the satin stitch. Here's a peek at our completed Beauty Found A block and we are ready to do some trimming. We're ready to go ahead and trim our Beauty Found blocks. All Beauty Founds A, B, and C are all trimmed the same way. So to trim them you're going to take the crimped metal edge of your trimmer and fold back the top of your block and place that crimped edge up against the stitching, the basting line and kind of shimmy it back and forth and you will use a 60 millimeter cutter and cut away the battleizer and the backing. And on these blocks you will do that on all four sides. Turn back the front, shimmy up the metal edge, lay the trimmer down and trim off the battleizer and the backing. So we'll continue around all four sides of the block 
using the trimmer. side so now we have all the backing and all the battleizer trimmed from behind the block so that's what it looks like on the back side so now we uh, turn the trimmer over and align the quarter inch line on the ruler with the basting line around the edge of the block and we'll trim up all the outside edges of all four sides of our block And again, you'll do this on all beauty founds A, B, and C. So here we have our trimmed beauty found A. It's beautiful. Time to make some more blocks.